There are many places to buy Bitcoin. They collect your personal information and jeopardize your privacy. KYC is the illicit activity. BISC is open source. It does not collect user data. You keep your private keys, create or take offers to trade peer-to-peer, -peer, and keep your Bitcoin private and secure. What is up, Bitcoiners? Welcome to Bitcoin Magazine's Proof of Key Celebration. For the next 15 minutes, I am going to be teaching you guys how to go from zero to fully self-sovereign Bitcoin usage with multi-sig. You guys, this is one of the best setups that we've had to date. It combines a good old-fashioned pruned Bitcoin core node and an awesome, awesome open source project that has just come out, Spectre Wallet. So Spectre Desktop is built on top of Bitcoin Core. You do not need Electrum. You do not need anything other than downloading a Bitcoin Core node and then using Spectre to interface directly with that node. So in this video, I am going to download Bitcoin Core. I'm going to download Spectre. I am going to set up a two of three multi-sig with three awesome hardware wallets. The first is industry leading security with the cold card Mark III. The second is the OG Bitcoin hardware wallet, the Trezor. And lastly is the cutting edge Kobo Vault, which is used and is industry leading in terms of its PSBT signing through QR code. There are trade-offs with both all three of these wallets, especially with the Kobo and the Trezor. But one of the keys to using multi-sig, especially with your own node, is that you don't actually have to trust any one of these manufacturers because your wallet is going to be effectively created and generated by all three and you need at least two in order to sign. So um, you are downloading a full node on your laptop, on your MacBook, since that's what a lot of people use. It's only gonna take up a few gigabytes of memory since it's a pure pruned node and then we are going to use spectre which is built right on top of bitcoin core with these three commodity hardware wallets um, in order to hodl our bitcoins without having to trust anyone this is better than coinbase this is better than ledger live this is better than almost anything else out there and again you can use a laptop you already have and about 200 dollars worth of bitcoin hardware wallets and you are absolutely good to go so let's just start walking through the first steps. Step one is you need to download a Bitcoin Core node. So uh, you can go to Bitcoin.org and go and download a Core node for the operating system of your preference. I'm going to be downloading a Mac node. Next is you need to go to Spectre.Solutions and download the open source Spectre desktop wallet. So this is a preview of what it's going to look like. And it's going to show you how to use it for multi-sig. They support almost every single hardware wallet out there. Uh, and then it will lead you to their GitHub page where you can download the software. Remember, guys, when you download this software, you need to be checking their PGP keys. I really like this guide on how to set up Bitcoin Core from Keep It Simple BTC. So the website is keepitsimplebitcoin.com. Kiss is freaking awesome. He is a friend of Bitcoin Magazine and he puts out absolutely incredible content for Bitcoiners that is focused on teaching you how to use this stuff right. So this guide in particular is about how to use Bitcoin Core properly so you can watch his complete video. He also timestamps the most important things and at the first minute he shows you how to verify your PGP key for both. You can use it for Core as well as Spectre. Let's jump into what this software actually looks like and feels like. 
Okay guys, so once you have downloaded Bitcoin Core, the wallet is a really simple interface. Uh, there's not, you don't actually have to even do anything with it, but that's what Bitcoin Core looks like. Uh, it takes about, I don't know, four, three to four days to download Bitcoin Core um, and then again, verify it completely without trusting anyone else. And then from there, uh, it will become a prune node and just run uh, and keep up with the blockchain every single time you open it up. It is pretty easy. It's pretty easy for uh, your node, your laptop, to catch back up with the chain head once it's been completely fully downloaded. And you can just close this. You don't need it anymore. Next is Spectre. So this is Spectre Desktop. Um, they have really created an awesome onboarding process to get you going. If you download it, a Bitcoin Core directly to your uh your laptop and there are no issues it's configured correctly you will specter should just automatically recognize it but if it doesn't you can click over here and they have a step-by-step -step process as you can see here uh, i had it auto detect off so i can just show you guys i'm gonna test it so as you can see auto detect worked i have uh bitcoin this connected to Bitcoin Core and I can start adding wallets and devices to Spectre. Um, really quickly, if you are having any issues with Spectre recognizing Bitcoin Core on your laptop, most likely it is because you need to uh, put different settings in your configuration file. So if you look down in the show notes, uh, there should be a way uh, for you to uh, grab and get into your Bitcoin application support file and find the configuration file. And then from there, I also have instructions on how to use Rodolfo Novak, the creator of the cold card. He maintains best practices for a Bitcoin full node configuration file. Uh, so there will be a GitHub link in the show notes to take you guys there. Grab his file from GitHub, replace your configuration file with Rodolfo's configuration file, and then voila, you will notice that Spectre immediately finds your, your, your Bitcoin full node on your laptop. All right, guys. So step number one is I need to put all of my, all of my hardware wallets onto here. So first and foremost is cold card. This is the best hardware wallet out there. Um, and it is one of the main wallets that I'm using for all of my cold storage. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit add device. It's going to have a wide menu of different devices that they support. They pretty much support every single hardware wallet. I'm going to go click on cold card. And then if you plug in your cold card, you're going to hit on get via USB. If you're using your SD card, you're going to click on use the SD card. So I'm going to click in on that. I have the file already on my laptop and boom. There we go. We have my multi-sig signatures and wallet uploaded. And then I'm going to click on add device. And now I want to add another device. Next is going to be the Kobo Vault. So the Kobo Vault is really cool. I'm going to name it really quick. So the Kobo Vault is really cool because it uses QR codes in order to maintain its air-gapped signing. So I don't have to plug anything into this Kobo Vault. I'm actually just going to use my webcam in order to scan the QR code to give the proper information over to Spectre Wallet. So next step is I pull up my QR code. I have to hit scan QR code and boom. There you go. There is my multi-sig signature for Kobo. Gonna hit add device. Now I need to add one more signature for my three uh, or my two of three multi-sig. Last is gonna be the good old-fashioned Trezor. I'm gonna plug this one in through USB, so it's not gonna be with um, air gapped like the cold card and the Kobo. But if you think of it, this can be your third signature. This can be your backup signature. Plugging the Trezor in, and one of the best things about using Trezor on Spectre is that when you use Trezor on Spectre, you don't actually have to rely on Trezor Bridge, Trezor's website, in order to sign into your Trezor. So a lot of other folks that use Trezor do actually link back to Trezor centralized website, which is just, it's just like not Bitcoin. It's not a Bitcoin way to use hardware. It's to use someone's server every time you want to log into that hardware. That doesn't really matter though. 
Spectre fixes this. Spectre does not use any sort of link up to Trezor's Bridge. As you can see, the pin pad pops up right here. So I'm going to plug in my pin. Boom. All of the wallets have been uploaded. Add device. And I am going to create my multi-sig wallet. So I have my Kobo Vault my cold card, and my Trezor. I need to select all three wallets, and now I'm gonna hit continue. So I'm choosing all the parameters. So I'm choosing Segwit, I'm choosing two out of three. Here are my three signers, and I am going to go over here and I'm gonna name this. I'm gonna call this Bitcoin Magazine Test. Create wallet. Okay, so my wallet is created. Now, this is extremely important. This is my backup pdf this is the instructions in an emergency where i lose one of these devices and i lose this uh, laptop that has all the map effectively to my bitcoin balance this pdf is the backup so you want to put this in a safe place you want to encrypt this uh, and you want to be really really safe with this so i'm going to hit continue Next is you need to get the cold card and the Kobo vault synced up so that way they know the rest of the multi-sig wallet information. So because the Trezor is already plugged in, it has the information. So it knows what the multi-sig is. But we need to show the Kobo vault and we need to transfer the information over to the cold card so both of these devices know about the signing information that were committed by the other devices in the quorum. So first I'm going to hit show QR code and then on my Kobo vault I'm gonna hit import multi-sig wallet and I'm gonna use my device to scan okay I'm confirming the details and I hit confirm so now the full multi-sig wallet is on this device as in this device knows exactly how to retrieve the wallet next is the cold card so the cold card takes a couple more steps because it doesn't have the QR code scanning that still uses PSBT. So what I'm gonna do is cold card uses uh, the micro USB. So I'm gonna plug in the micro USB to my computer and transfer it all over. So I'm gonna save the cold card file, take that file and put it into my SD card, eject the SD card and put it into my cold card. So I want to go to my cold card after I put in the SD card and I go to multi-sigs and then I hit import from SD card. It's the first option. It's going to show me the name of the wallet. It shows me the two of three the and all the information about my cosigners. I'm going to click accept and now it is saved onto this wallet. Boom, there's a coal, there is a, all the information for that multi-sig is now on this device. The last step here is to verify that these addresses are in fact being generated by the wallet that you created. The way to do that is you need to hit display addresses on device. So. We have this address here, and I'm gonna hit display address on device. It needs to detect a device, so I'm gonna plug the treasure back in. All right, so now the treasure is showing me the exact address that is displayed on the screen. That's it, guys. I just confirmed this multi-sig address, and on the treasure, I can hit show me the QR code and scan directly from the treasure if I wanna maximize uh, the the security of the transaction here hit continue and boom so you guys we downloaded Bitcoin core we connected it to Spectre wallet we connected Spectre wallet to three everyday hardware wallets and we created a two of three multi-sig wallet for us to use in a completely self-sovereign way to hodl our bitcoin and use bitcoin and then we verified that all of the address information that we would be seeing and sending our bitcoins to on Bit on specter wallet is in fact also verified on our three individual hardware 
wallet. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. This is CK from Bitcoin Magazine. I hope you learned a lot and that you are enjoying the Bitcoin price and this January 3rd presentation of Proof of Keys Day from Bitcoin Magazine. Make sure to smash that like button and make sure to share this with your friends and family. Stack sats and stay humble, y'all. Peace.